Hello and welcome to Europe Direct. This month's programme comes from Portugal, known to most Europeans for its beautiful coastline and sunny holiday resorts. But that scenic backdrop masks real danger. Portugal's roads are some of the most deadly in Europe. The government here in Lisbon has just introduced new tough drink-drive laws and anti-speeding legislation. Many people here welcome the new measures, but others say they're too extreme and are threatening Portugal's tradition of Latin culture. Portugal has one of the worst road accident death rates in Europe. Twice as many people are killed in their cars here as in Italy, and four times as many compared to the UK. As a percentage of GDP, Portugal spends more on hospital treatment and the consequences of reckless driving than she makes on tourism, one of her most lucrative industries. Since last month, the penalties for drinking and driving and for speeding have got tougher. The alcohol limit here in Portugal is now one of the lowest in Europe, on a par only with Sweden. Suddenly, there was this uh, lorry that uh, came onto us at phenomenal speed and just uh, pushed us out of our lane and uh, the car uh, burst into flames. I was unconscious for maybe one second or two and my daughter was um, in front of me lying down on the road. I tried to breathe uh, into her um, once, twice, three times. Uh, there was no response, uh, so I laid her down and uh, sort of went, went back to the car to, to see what had happened to the other people. My, my wife had been taken out of the car unconscious. Manuel Ramos's five-year-old daughter was killed on one of Portugal's most dangerous highways, the IP5. He and his wife survived, although inevitably their lives would never be the same again. Life goes on. But uh, I think it is, it is also very important to keep my, the, the memory of my daughter alive. And one of the ways I, I do it is by uh, pressing people and pressing the governments into, this, into doing something positive uh, to, keep, to save other people's lives. They were pulling over, uh, drivers were over speeding. What's the speed limit? 50 kilometers an hour. What are the drivers doing? It's about 120 kilometers an hour. This driver was tracked by radar doing 74 kilometers per hour. It's a serious offense. Portuguese drivers aren't used to getting caught and they rarely pay their fines when they do. Last month, new traffic laws came into effect. The alcohol level permitted for drivers was cut from 0.5 grams per litre of blood to 0.2 grams per litre, making Portugal one of the strictest drink-drive countries in Europe. We have about uh, 2,400 uh, persons working daily, and uh, they are not enough. Uh, but I think that uh, police enforcement, it's not enough. The law, it's not enough. We must change uh, behaviours. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's the secret to, to solve the problem of uh, road fatalities in Portugal. And that's being recognised by businesses here. Gulp, a national oil company, is one of the first to send employees on advanced driving courses. It's a long-term, indirect investment, but an indication of how seriously companies have begun to take the issue of road safety. They are racing in the streets, they are fighting against one, uh, against the others. It's like bullfighting in the street. Whilst most ordinary drivers welcome the new laws, those who drive for a living say they discriminate against them. Truck and bus drivers recently held a 24-hour strike. Wine growers are also angry. They say the new alcohol limits threaten the traditional Portuguese way of life, where wine with every meal is entirely expected, but can now push you over the legal limit. With this uh, decision, the sales in the wine, Portuguese wine, he, he, he lost 50%. But in the other country, the limit is 0.5. It's for a country, a Mediterranean country, a producer, a wine producer like Portugal, it's impossible to take a limit like this. After years of dictatorship and poverty, joining the EU spelled the beginning of prosperity for the Portuguese people. 25 years ago, there were just 500,000 cars on the road. Today, there are 5 million. Portugal's Minister for Home Affairs recognises the problems but insists his government's new measures are working. 80% of the Portuguese 
agree with the new limit. Of course, there is uh, also people that doesn't agree. But uh, this new limit is a good limit, but uh, there's a lot of work to do yet. Campaigners agree. They say the cost to Portugal of victims such as these young men is far too high. We are giving a lot of investment away because we are killing in our roads people that we spend a lot of money to raise them, to educate them. And of course it is very difficult to give price of a human life. But apart the suffering, there is a price for the school, for the university, for the companies. And we are spending about roughly the same amount that we are gaining in terms of, for instance, tourism that is very important for the Portuguese economy, we are giving that away because we are spending that much in the human lives. Mm -hmm.